let's say they've spent two, three years in prison, they get out, they have no job, they have no money, they have no place to live, they have no transportation. Uh, it's very easy to go right back to what they were doing before. We're dealing with guys who have shown repeatedly that they are going to recidivate, they're going to commit new crimes. And yet the statistics from the program thus far indicate that instead of that coin toss, we're at around 10%. Uh, that's a remarkable change. When we first started the program, employers were real reluctant to hire some of our graduates. But after time, they started coming here actually to Angola and seeing what we're doing inside of the shop. We have yet to take an employer to the Louisiana State Penitentiary and take them through the program who did not come back and commit to hire. It is that powerful. It's HVAC, it's heavy equipment, it's welding. We wanted those type of skills that uh, those guys would be able to work as long as they want to work. You know, we wanted these guys to come out with a skilled trade that would be with them the rest of their lives and for those who, who are capable to start their own businesses. I mean, the feeling, me just telling my, telling my mother, my, I, just got cert I just got certified in brakes. I'm a technician in brakes and I didn't know nothing about this on the street. The teachers, known as mentors, are like Justin Singleton. The current moment I'm serving life without parole here in the state of Louisiana, like I feel my duty to try to get them to see that their lives can mean so much more. Every time we get one of these guys out of here successfully, it's like throwing that rock in the pond and just watching the ripples go out and it's just countless how many lives we could possibly be changing. Out of the ashes of broken lives come new beginnings. From the walls of Angola come changed men broken but not beaten, ready to participate in the great human experience we call life.